Muslim Peace President Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the board and staff of KRA, I wish to express our gratitude to your excellency for your presence here to preside over our 13th ceremony for the celebration of Mpan Taxpayer. So we note that this is the third consecutive year in which you have joined us, which practice now establishes the tradition that taxpayers award ceremony is always pre presided over by the head of state. Sir, in past years we have only dedicated one week in the third week of October for the celebration of taxpayer. In 2015, however, we dedicated one whole month during which various activities have been and continue to be undertaken or geared towards promoting tax compliance. These activities include personal visits that we made to about 500 taxpayers, at which we thank them for their past support towards tax compliance. We have also undertaken various CSR activities. In addition, we have hosted our annual school's tax club competition focused on secondary schools. This latter event, which we have been running now for the last three years, is important in that it has enabled us to reach almost one quarter of a million school-going youth to whom we have directed the tax compliance message. Your Excellency, our intention is to expand programs targeting the youth with the objective of ensuring that these promising Kenyans develop the right culture towards tax compliance in readiness for their future role as taxpayers. In today's event, we shall unveil the winner among the participants in the school tax club competition who will be recognized along the others receiving it. Your Excellency, sir, let me very briefly highlight some key issues of conceptual significance to KRA at the present time. First, on the 18th of September, we launched our new, our sixth three-year corporate plan with the theme building trust through facilitation for enhanced tax compliance. And that theme is running up there. This theme reflects the first time in KRA's history that building public trust has been adopted as an overriding corporate objective. The theme reflects our deliberate decision to move away from the present perception where the public perceives us as an institution given to using force and unorthodox tactics to enforce compliance. Instead, we aspire to develop a culture where taxpayers trust and see us as a helpful partner worth associating with even for those who may have tax difficulty. Secondly, Your Excellency, sir, KRA considers technology mobilization as an absolute strategic imperative in supporting both the change approach and the delivery of a broader mandate. In this regard, we are gratified to note that uptake of our iTax platform, uptake of our iTax electronic services platform launched in July last year has been quite encouraging with almost 3 million Kenyans now enrolled on iTax. With effect from September 2015, we made it mandatory for all large and medium-sized companies to make declarations through ITAX, a process which will enormously enrich our database with information about those who do business with Kenya's most important business segment. Moreover, with the expansion of the withholding VAT to cover both government and large and medium corporate sector, our information database will be further enhanced, thereby providing us with better leverage in driving compliance among us, those who do business with government and with the key corporates in our country. Your Excellency, sir, in the case of customs, we have prioritized the replacement of the Simba system with a more versatile best practice platform that will help address intractable challenges, especially those which are associated with the exercise of discretion by staff. With the automation of key processes, including decisions on cargo valuation, we expect to see better revenue collection and more efficient freight facilitation. We hope to expeditiously conclude the customs project once we resolve a pending port challenge. Besides, Your Excellency, sir, besides the replacement of the Simba system, we have commenced judicious steps to provide technology support for customs cargo inspection processes. In August this year, we received three new large cargo scanners through a generous donation from the government of the People's Republic of China. 
Upon completion of installation work, which is now in progress, we expect to markedly improve customs capacity to inspect cargo without the need for physical stripping of containers. The second phase of the scanner upgrade project has also commenced with the objective to upgrade and or replace the old equipment, integrate the equipment through a common software platform, and create a command and control capacity to help better control and monitor scanning operations. It is our hope to get this project firmly on track towards completion within the current fiscal year. In the interim, we also expect to secure and install passenger baggage scanners, scanners at the JKIA arrivals lounge within the next four months, thereby removing the need for haphazard stripping of passenger baggage, which has been identified as a major cause of service dissatisfaction by passengers entering Kenya. Your Excellency, sir, the actions we are taking will not only help enhance revenue collection, but will besides facilitate in tackling the intractable challenge of integrity and corruption among staff. We are aware that the primary cause of integrity challenges is the existence of wide scope discretion for staff to make key decisions. We expect automation to significantly help in curtailing such discretion, even as we continue pursuing additional measures geared towards addressing other aspects of the staff integrity problem. I wish to conclude Sir, by once more thanking you for gracing our event, by thanking our taxpayers for their continued commitment, and the board and staff of KRA for their continued dedication to a call to duty. I wish to urge all Kenyans to embrace our motto, Tulipe Ushuru, Tujitegeme. And now, sir, it's my pleasure to invite the Cabinet Secretary to make his remarks and also invite you. Your Excellency, uh, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenyan Defense Force, uh, Chair and Board of Directors of KRA and the management present, distinguished taxpayers, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first and foremost uh, take this opportunity to express our deep appreciation to you on behalf of the Kenya Revenue Authority as a national treasury and indeed on behalf of all taxpayers for once again accepting to grace this important day in our national calendar where we honor our distinguished taxpayers. We are uh, pleased that you found time out of your busy schedule to come and grace this important occasion. Let me also take this opportunity to welcome all the taxpayers uh, for coming to celebrate this event. My task uh, this morning is very brief. It's to invite you to officiate this important function and preside over the award to our distinguished taxpayers. But before I do that, uh, Your Excellency, and with your permission, allow me to make a few uh, remarks. First, let me express our gratitude to you for your support and guidance in supporting us to ensure that KRA plays its important role in our national development agenda. It's through, it's through this support and guidance that we have been able to undertake the reforms at KRA that have resulted in improved performance over the years. These achievements could not have been done without the partnership with our taxpayers, and I would like to take this opportunity to commend on them. As you know, Your Excellency, the post-2015 SDGs will uh, depend heavily on how we strengthen our domestic resource uh, mobilization. And uh, of course, Kenya has been doing very, we very well, uh, but there's scope to do, to do more. This current financial year, Your Excellency, we target to collect over 1.3 trillion uh, Kenya shillings in terms of uh, revenue collection. This performance will be underpinned by ongoing reforms in tax policy and administration. Kenya Revenue Authority is expected to institute measures to expand the revenue base and minim minimize the tax uh, leakage. The, the Commissioner General has already outlined uh, some of the actions that they are doing. But uh, Your Excellency, as you know, <coughs> the first quarter of this financial year, we have been uh, behind in terms of revenue shortfalls. And uh, we are now uh, 
discuss with Terry some of the detailed strategies uh, to return back uh, the, the revenue target. So in addition to some measures uh, which uh, the Commissioner General has mentioned, let me outline a few that uh, we are already embarked on or we are in the process of, of doing. First is that we have uh, agreed with the KRA to reduce leakages by first reviewing the administration of customs and VAT collection, and this may involve also us, you know, working with the consultant in this area so that we can strengthen the processes uh, in custom and VAT uh, collection. Also, we will be working to improve the auditing process, especially on the transfer pricing, uh, construction companies and uh, large tax and wholesale companies. And uh, again, the other issue is on the debt collection, which the Commissioner General has said in, in depth. Um, the National Treasury also uh, will monitor this time round on a daily basis revenue collections and uh, daily clearance of cargo at the port of Mombasa. Uh, we will uh, be monitoring the container freight service, TFS, to see loopholes by, for example, doing due diligence before renewal of licenses. Currently, uh, TFS are not, TFSs are not required to renew their licenses. We'll also be improving on the stock management uh, so that KRA can monitor goods moving out, moving in and out of the TFS. We'll also be ins installing CCTVs to monitor any movements of cargo, especially at night, and putting in place approved security rather than the current system where the TFSs itself provide for own security. On the issues of governance, um, let me inform you that uh, the National Treasury will install a hotline where we expect patriotic Kenyans to inform us on issues of concerns at KRA. And this we should be done within the next one week. And um, we have also discussed with KRA, uh, which of course they have also come up with a mechanism uh, to audit the lifestyle of all KRA officials. I know there are quite a number of staff who are, uh, have been doing a good job. Uh, there are a few uh, elements that we would like, you know, to ensure that they do the job uh, correctly and uh, in line with the chapter six of our constitution in terms of leadership and integrity. And uh, of course, this is usually the best practice and we will be doing this in a very careful manner to ensure that uh, we do not victimize any staff. Uh, so there is uh, already a mechanism which we are working on and very shortly we'll be informing uh, the public the progress on that uh, audit. So Your Excellency, I just want to say that uh, substantial progress have been done in revenue collection, um, but obviously we believe that there is scope uh, to, do, to do more and we'll be updating you on some of the uh, works that we are doing so that we bring back the shortfalls that we have seen uh, of late, uh, we bring it back to target. So with those few remarks, Your Excellency, it's now my pleasure to invite you to uh, address the audience and preside over the awards ceremony of our distinguished taxpayers of the year 2015. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Let me say that uh, we are very pleased to be with you today at this very important annual function where we celebrate what we in government call our present day heroes and heroines who are really the taxpayers and who have chosen to be patriotic in terms of contributing towards the funding of Kenya's development agenda. These Kenyans made the tough of sacrifices that have brought us the freedom 
that we enjoy today. Let me say that we cannot thank you enough because in the same way as our forefathers won the freedom, it is through your efforts that we are winning our own economic freedom. In fact, that is why it was decided that we need to set aside time every year to reflect on what we must do in order to sustain the spirit of independence and self-determination. Ladies and gentlemen, since coming into office, my government has really tried to prioritize facilitation and engagement with the private sector. And I believe that that is the right way to achieve the kind of growth that we need if we are to fulfill all the pledges that we made to Kenya. Towards this end, we have tried to undertake a number of reforms, and I note with appreciation that Kenya's ranking in respect of paying taxes improved from number 146 in the year 2014 to number 102 in the year 2015. This improvement, I believe, is largely attributable to the introduction of electronic services, which have enabled taxpayers to more conveniently handle their tax matters. I want to assure you that my government is committed to ensuring more uptake of electronic services on various platforms by public institutions in order to lighten the burden for the public in accessing various government services. The automation of tax administration services, which has already empowered Kenyans to transact tax affairs without the need to travel long distances, has also helped to improve public service delivery and also Kenya's attractiveness in respect of those business indicators. My government will continue to prioritize service, digitalization, with a view to making Kenya ultimately the preferred business hub of the African continent. And let me assure you that with these reforms that we have embarked on, we are not turning back. The commitment of my government is to have Kenya improve its doing business ranking to below position number 50 in the next few years. To achieve this, government institutions must also play their part, and this includes combining a culture of service and diligence while making the most of available technology. Ladies and gentlemen, my government took office with a promise to transform Kenyan society by creating a better and more conducive and safer environment that supports enterprise growth. And it is for this reason that we will continue to invest heavily in improving the environment for business by continually enhancing security, quality of transport infrastructure, as well as access to affordable energy. Despite this, my government also still recognizes that challenges still remain, including sustenance of macroeconomic stability through low inflation, sustainable fiscal de deficit, a stable currency, and affordable interest rates. I am deeply aware of some of the challenges that we are currently facing in this area, but I want to assure you that we are taking appropriate measures to reverse the situation and maintain a macroeconomic environment that will help us achieve our developmental goals. My government is addressing the challenges through expenditure rationalization, tax revenue mobilization initiatives, both of which should help alleviate the pressure on the domestic money market. I therefore want to see concrete measures taken to enhance tax revenue mobilization by ensuring that all those eligible to pay their fair share of taxes must do so. 
central to this achievement, to the achievement of this objective, is a need to engender a culture that promotes excellence while firmly punishing acts of misconduct among staff involved in revenue collection. Towards this end, as I have emphasized before, measures geared towards eradicating corruption in tax collection must be implemented. These measures must not only include the strongest punishment of corruption offenses, but also institution of a program, as has just been mentioned, to vet staff who handle sensitive tax matters. Indeed, to this end, I am directing the National Treasury to work with the Board of KRA to ensure speedy implementation of appropriate staff vetting framework, but to do it correctly and without any victimization of any kind. Our political freedom ultimately must go hand in hand with financial independence, which can only be guaranteed when all Kenyans commit to pay that which they ought to as taxes. Let us all commit to do our part in realizing our dream of economic growth, development, and independence. I thank you all for being faithful taxpayers, and I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. I will now most humbly request Your Excellency, sir, to present awards to distinguished taxpayers, Madam Fiona Moshai and Lida Wanyango, staff members at KRA, will guide us through the presentations. Madam Fiona, kindly. Excellency, sir, the following taxpayers have excelled in their various fields and have shown improved performance, which has assisted in generating revenue for the government. The first award goes to the ITAX champion. This organization has demonstrated persistence and resilience in providing feedback on the ITAX platform. We recognize this consultancy firm for the effort made in supporting KRA's ITAX rollout activity, which commenced in March 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Mistry Ratilal Naran. The second award goes to the tax general of the year. The recipient of this award has deep interest in taxation matters. Her reporting is accurate and objective. The authority would like to recognize the recipient's passion on tax matters. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Adelaide Changole. the Partnership Award. Your Excellency, sir, the following taxpayers have partnered with Kenya Revenue Authority in their various sectors and have assisted in generating revenue for the government. The partnership categories include a customs partner, a supportive partner in real estate, capacity building partner of the year, trade facilitation partner, and an innovation award. The award to the customs of the customs partner of the year. 
The company is an authorized economic operator in the East African community and is among the top clearing agents. The period under review in which the company experienced remarkable growth in total revenue collected through their declarations. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Ad Urgent Cargo Handling Limited. This award goes to the supporting partner in real estate. To drive tax compliance, the authority introduced the tax compliance certificate. The organization stands out as it has made the tax compliance certificate a prerequisite for registration of contractors. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to the National Construction Authority. This award goes to the Capacity Building Partner of the Year. This long-term partner focuses on capacity building through training of customs officers on valuation, tariffs, and enforcement. In the year 2014-2015, the organization sponsored a total of 18 KRA staff for both short-term courses and master's programs. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Japan International Corporation Agency. goes to the trade facilitation partner. The awardee supports the growth of trade, both regional and international in East Africa. Their mission is to promote rapid advances in East Africa's integration, trade, and global competitiveness for all East Africans through cross-border trade. This includes infrastructure projects such as one-stop border post facilities, which promote a single customs territory, in addition to the Mombasa Port Charter and the Port Infrastructure Project using the regional electronic cargo tracking system. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Trademark East Africa. Innovation Award. This organization has partnered with the authority to enhance customer service to Kenyans and has been recognized for streamlining government services through a central online platform through its program, which allowed the country to facilitate access to public service for citizens and save money. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving a round of applause to Huduma Kenya. And now my colleague Linda Onyango will take us through the next category of awards.
Excellency Sir, this award, this award goes to future taxpayer awards. This category falls under schools outreach program where we sensitize Kenyan youth about taxation through formation of tax gap. The purpose is to demystify taxation and inculcate a taxpaying culture in students from an early age. The tax clubs held a national convention where they presented different items on a given theme and the winners were crowned Future Taxpayers 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to St. Ignatius Mukumu Boys High School. Senior Tax Ambassador. This category recognizes Senior Tax Citizens of the Year. The first one to be awarded in this category was born in 1902, according to available records. She has therefore witnessed 113 birthdays. She hails, she hails from Chepalungu Village, Kapsabet Town, Nandi County. She has demonstrated that age is not a limitation in embracing technology by updating her ITAX registration status on the ITAX platform. Her efforts, her efforts have gone a long way in demonstrating that ITAX Nirahisi. While seeking a pin to facilitate electricity connection, she personally visited our Eldoret offices and had her registration status updated underscoring the importance of updating registration status by all Kenyans irrespective of age. The second senior tax ambassador was born in 1914, according to available records. He has witness, witnessed 101 birthdays. He hails from Cabernet's village, Ziwa Town, was in Gishu County. He has similarly embraced technology by updating his tax registration status on the iTax platform. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in giving a round of applause to Gogo Tapiotin Mungen and Kukwe Chelule Keino.
Honest Taxpayer Voluntary Disclosure. This award seeks to reward instances where taxpayers disclose lapses in fully meeting tax obligations. The awardee voluntarily disclosed and paid a substantial amount of tax. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Oxford University Press East Africa Limited. County of the Year. This category recognizes a county government that demonstrates a high yield in payment of pay as you earn, payee, and value added taxes, VAT, in relation to its expenditure. It also recognizes support to the revenue collection efforts through timely payment of taxes. The county government being awarded today recorded the highest ratio of payee and withholding VAT in relation to its expenditure during the period under review. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Laikipia County Government. Best Corporation Tax, Small and Medium Enterprises. The recipient of this award has demonstrated singular responsibility in meeting their tax obligation and has been in the front line in embracing technology in filing of returns and payment of taxes. They have had an impressive highest percentage of corporation tax paid to turnover declared in the period under review in the small and medium sized enterprises. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Better Globe Forestry Limited. Importer of the year. The company is being recognized for having the highest payment of duties in respect of dry cargo. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Auto Express Limited. in corporation tax. Best growth in corporation tax. During the period under review, the recipient recorded the highest growth in corporation tax paid compared to what was paid during the prior period. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Basco Products Limited.
unpaid tax VAT yield. The company has recorded the highest VAT paid for every shilling of turnover during the period under review. The achievement is commendable given that the financial services sector is not a major generator of VAT with the bulk of services being tax exempt. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to CFC Stanbic Bank Limited. Best Corporation Tax Yield Large Company. Under this category, we have considered the income tax paid for every shilling of income earned. The winner in this category is also the overall winner of the year's Taxpayer Award. During the period under review, the company had the best ratio of corporation tax paid for every shilling of turnover among taxpayers of comparable size. The achievement is also commendable given that generally the agricultural export sector demonstrated low corporation tax yield. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause to Eastern Produce Kenya Limited. A round of applause to the taxpayer of the year, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. We humbly request your excellency, uh, the chairman, uh, KRA, would wish to. Your excellency, once again, thank you very much for coming to this function. Uh, for you to be able to remember this particular day, we have got a small present for you. If you could just walk at the back there, that will make the presentation. Asante Sana, I request kindly Your Excellency that we have a photo session with the winners, uh, with those who have been awarded. And after that, members of KRA board, if we could kindly line up here for the second photo. Very quickly, members of the board.
I am advised that we are all welcome to lunch. I am advised that we are all welcome to lunch. Lunch is served, bon appétit. <laughs>